everyone, welcome to this new podcast where we call ourselves the Unproductive Nerds because we are nerds with nothing else to do with our time. We, we never do anything. <laughs> we never get anything done. Thank you, John, for your brief summary on what unproductive means. It's really... I know you, you need to be explained. You really did like an lemony sticket thing there in a series of unfortunate events where you're just going to explain some words to us. Does that make me Patrick Warburton? Yes, it does. <laughs> well, I'm Rhiannon, and these are my co-hosts, Jack. Uh, that's me. And John. That's the other guy. I'm, I'm Steve. <laughs> Steve is John, and it's really, it's literally the first podcast you're going to throw everybody off. Hey. <laughs> I, I, by the way, I just found a picture of the real Lemony Snicket. <laughs> that is not what I expected. Oh my god. Wow. He is a pudgy, middle-aged, sad-looking man. Wow. Well, considering oh. we can't see that, sadly. Oh, that is... <laughs> That's real sad, actually. I'm trying to describe it. I'm gonna try and describe it from the audience. Now imagine Mr. Potato Head from Toy Story. Now that's me. But hear me out. Hear me out. What's the thing you get in the neck and it's like a big boil? Goiter. If Mr. Potato Head both had a neck and got goiter, that's what Lemony Snicket looks like. You are so mean. Now to be fair, this this looks exactly like Mr. Potato Head with a goiter. <laughs> I'm not wrong. Alright, everybody. Don't pause the podcast, but if you have to pause it, go look up what Lemony Snicket looks like. His name is Daniel Handler. <laughs> so you made the, the name for the book? Yeah, no. He wasn't christened Lemony Snicket, Jack, no. Shane, that yeah. would be a pretty awesome name to have. Wouldn't it? It's like, ah, oh, baby Lemony over there. Actually, baby yeah. Lemony. Ah, oh, baby Lemony over here. Lemony. All right, um, for this podcast, we're going to talk about all things nerdy, including books, comics, movies, gaming, the show Riverdale. It's an awful <laughs> lot we're going to talk about the show Riverdale. Fuck's sake, Jack. It I might be the greatest the show. I've watched the first episode of Riverdale. I've watched all four episodes that are I at the time of this recording. Behind, so it's real good. Don't, don't spoil, please. Uh, no spoilers. No spoilers. No spoilers. I really like the idea. I just didn't find it very engaging. Oh, I found it engaging with... Archie, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, that took me a second, which is, wow, come, ah. you dirty pervert. Oh, yeah. That, guy, thought... that guy's probably like 30 in real life, you sick son of a bitch. How does Look. that make her sick? It'd be sick if he was like 16. Yeah, fair enough. Even then, that's only, you know... No, no, I'm not normally like, oh god, this guy is hot, but I gotta admit, this, this guy is pretty good looking. I, any, any episode where Betty or Veronica is wearing anything like a short skirt, I have paused several times, so I cannot condemn you, my friend. I can only imagine what you were like during the third episode. Oh, that, that scene <laughs> in the bikini. Anybody who hasn't watched this is going to be real confused. There's a scene, basically, where they go in and they try to intimidate this guy. And her plan for this is, oh, nobody's going to recognize me if I put on a black wig and some more makeup <laughs> and a bikini. I'm sorry, but that is basically what happens at the end of Sherlock season four. Is that how Sherlock... I haven't seen it, so well, I... Oh, in that case, um, I won't tell you, but there's a character who uses paper-thin disguises, but none of the characters notice, and to be oh, fair, yeah, I, yeah, didn't, yeah, I, didn't, yeah. I, I didn't either. I didn't. No, but it's really that paper-thin. I know season I, four is not great. It is not... I, 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 I like to imagine... I season three. I like to imagine it's Benedict Cumberbatch, but he's wearing a black wig, makeup, <laughs> and a boob tube. And like a bikini. I need that in my life now. Yeah, I mean, it's and Walter's really just like, just, just, just let him have this one. Let him have this one. He, he'll try and kill himself again for Christ's sake. Oh my God. Oh Sherlock, is that you? No. <laughs> that? I guess it's not him. So your Benedict Cumberbatch is. It's better than Cumberbatch doing a disguise. I'm not. It's him acting as Sherlock, like, acting as somebody I think else. That was Phil Jubilus doing Stephen Fry. <laughs> So Jack, hey, Mr. Fry. So Jack Long doing Benedict Cumberbatch is Phil Jupiter's doing Stephen Fry. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right. So what do we have in the news this week? Well, Logan is good. Apparently. Considering this is our first episode, I'm thinking maybe we could talk about all the trailer drops we're after getting in the last there few weeks. There have been many. Many. Drops. All right. Let me start with a movie we're all real excited for. One that looks great. One that is a cinematic gem in the making. Logan. It's going to be Logan. Power Rangers. Oh, oh God. Did anybody see the All-Star trailer? <laughs> which is a, which is a lie straight off the bat, because they didn't put in, hey, now, I'm an All-Star, get your game face on, or whatever the lyric is, because that would have been <laughs> fucking perfect. Lyrics. I'm sorry, I'm not a Smash Mouth fan. I only saw the other one, you know. Feed oh, the cup. Uh, it, it's real good, though. Actually, the longer you watch that scene, because there's, there's a longer version in the All-Star trailer, 
the more you realize, yeah, I, I think she's on drugs. <laughs> So what were you doing for the weekend? So yeah, I was off being an yeah. alien superhero, and um, she she looks it's, like she's a meth addict. Yeah, it's not the way she's saying it. It's not the thing she's saying. It's her delivery. She yeah. does sound sort of zoned out. She sounds kind of like the girl from Parks and Recreation, uh, the one Chris Pratt goes out with. Aubrey Plaza. That's the one. It's, oh, I know. She's also in Legion, isn't she? For all I know, she was also in um, other things. Thank you. You are she, she has, you're real educational on this channel. Aubrey, 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 Aubrey Plaza is a is an actress who has been in things it's such a, as the, like the opening they showed us. It's just so scarily similar to Chronicle. No, but I, I like how they yeah. try. Yeah, it's just it does feel like a more lighthearted Chronicle. Yeah, but they try to get self referential as well. Like, so we more like Spider Man or we like Iron Man. I'm like, dude, shut the fuck up. You're a Power Ranger. Just <laughs> no. I don't. Uh, I don't do that. I know I'd be the same way in real life. I'm like, ooh, am I Iron Man? I'm like, no, fuck By the way, is, is, I can't remember, is the Yellow Ranger an Asian in this? No. Okay. I think she's tan, does she, does she have tan skin though? Yeah. Is she, I can't, I don't think she's like. Would she be Latino? I think she's Latino. I think it's Latina if, if it's a woman. Latina, oh, okay. Latina Turner, I yes. Know. So, um, this movie is going to be the greatest movie ever. Let's be honest. I'm putting it out there now. I'm calling it Movie of 2016, Power Rangers Reboot. It's going to be the best. Now, if they want like, to go... Either it's, I, either it's going to be just as I expected, or it's just going to be slightly better than what I expected. And know? what you're expecting is the Academy Award winner for Best Picture next year. Because I'm exactly, calling it that Power yeah, you know, Brian Cranston gets the Oscar for Supporting Actor as Zordon. Uh, you mean as Pinface? <laughs> I mean jor ls technology, basically. Yeah, basically. Oh my god. And how did how did he go from Breaking Bad to that? How do you need a paycheck that badly <laughs> that you're doing like pin arc versions of yourself? Yeah. Um. The Yellow Ranger is her name is apparently Becky G. Wait. So it's what was the original Yellow Ranger's name? Um. Oh, I can't remember. She died in a car crash. I know that much. Oh. That was a real sad episode of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Yeah, yeah, it definitely was. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not the only one. I'm bringing this down real fast. No, you see, we went down fast. first episode, guys. So oh, I, got, I got real happy all of a sudden because I pictured it. <laughs> Jeez, that sounds dark. But I pictured them at her grave. And then everybody, they're in their Power Ranger costumes. Except everyone else is in normal funeral gear. They have suits over the Power Ranger costumes. Oh and behind them, this is the best part, is the Megazord in a giant suit. <laughs> with, like, flowers in his head. Like, sorry for your loss. I, I sometimes, sometimes question what goes to your head sometimes, what, Jack. What voice would the Megazord speak in? It's made of, like, five prehistoric animals. I always just imagined it would sound kind of like um, Optimus Prime. Like that... Generic robot voice. Stephen Hawking. <laughs> what if, what I am not make us or that was terrible. That was a bad impression over my standards. What if it sounds like Ryan Cranston? So he's just doing his serious voice. Like, Sorry for your loss. You know that'd be fucking cool. I, I'd be honest. That actually would be pretty cool. Have you ever noticed that it's he does that? It's time. Whenever Brian Cranston, whenever he's doing comedy, he does sort of like a more high pitched voice, and then whenever he's doing a serious role, he just drops it an octave and speaks more slowly. Mm-hmm. And it's it won him awards just doing that ah, voice. It's the awards. It's, Bri- awards, it's Brian it. Cranston. Take the awards. Brian Cranston is so talented. He could come in the room, start smacking my mother, and I'd still be like, oh "My boy. God, great man, yeah. great man. You are you are a fine man." <laughs> Can you do more Breaking Bad for me? <laughs> anyway, um, I suppose we better talk about Logan, because... It looks oh, super good. It looks really good. Anybody see the reviews for it yet? Because the reviews posted last night as we were talking about this. And holy shit, they're really good reviews. Really? I, mean, uh. I didn't expect them to be bad reviews. It looks like... I expected them to be the same as the Wolverine, which were... Well, the Wolverine. Eh, it was alright. Oh, the Wolverine was... I never thought the Wolverine looked good. No. I was excited for it. The idea of Wolverine fighting ninjas, I'll be honest, sounds amazing in theory. Well, yeah, but Katanas it's... versus knife hands just sounds great to me. Mm, yeah, but well, just, you know. I think really they just kind of sat down and said, "Why? Well, what else can we do with Wolverine?" Because he was in Japan once. He was. Let's roll with it. <laughs> well, Japan's a strange place. Let's put a man with knives in his hands there. Yeah. 
I really wish the post credit scene had just been Dak and just showing up. And we cut off, we, we cut off his adamantine claws, and we, are we going to keep continuity? Oh, wait, no. Who do you get for Dak? <laughs> who do you choose as Dak? Why does he oh, choose as Dak? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he doesn't have, I'm going to say this version of Dak doesn't have the healing factor, he ages normally. So it's just, it's just Ken Watanabe with the claws. To that the, is perfect. Hello, Father. Oh, and you know the next time you see Wolverine in a battle, it would cut to Ken Watanabe like, maybe, maybe Dak and you should get in there. He's like, no, let them fight. It's like, oh. Yes, that is the thing that Ken Watanabe is. Also, oh, it's, it's, it's sad that's the only thing of Ken Watanabe I can remember from that movie. Um, uh, he was like, uh, uh, South Bang in Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, no, wait, he wasn't. That was a different guy. Oops. Oh, so they all look the same to you, John. No, no just bloody just racist no. over here. What has what oh. Ken Watanabe been in? Was he the original Godzilla? Was that a reference to why he was in the new Godzilla? Because it they felt no, like they were referencing something with he, him being he there. He definitely wasn't. No. <laughs> I think the reference was that he's Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the big reference? We have a then? Japanese cast member, everybody. It's Don't worry. Like, 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 like we're not whitewashing it. We put one Japanese guy in there. Uh-huh. It's fine. No, but do um, you think X-23 will have foot claws? I, I hope think so. I think so. I th- like the way the way we've seen him like kicking into people. It kind of yeah, looks like he's doing yeah. the football. Oh, I just want to just want a scene where like you know she's just trying with the hand claws and it's just not working. So she just turns around, and kicks him, and just the claw just goes. It's gonna look <laughs> straight through a guy. Given that, given that it's M, they could probably go for a, sh- a bit where like M X twenty three goes for like a a cock shot, but with her. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god! Where like Wolverine kicks a guy in the nuts and then he spins around and X twenty three does it as well, but with her claw foot. You see, I, I wasn't on board with her having foot claws. I, I'm like, that's a stupid idea. But the minute you mention her crotch shot, <laughs> I am on board. I mean, if we can have a bit where Wolverine is literally putting all three claws straight through a guy's head, upwards through the chin, I think we can have that. Oh god. That's brilliant. Have you ever wanted to see a theater full of men just kind of wince at the same time? Because that's going to be the <laughs> shock for it. It's like, <laughs> just, snick. We're sitting there oh. watching it just instantaneously. like, ah! Have you ever seen Pulp Fiction? Everybody's seen Pulp Fiction. It's the greatest movie ever. Go on. She's about to say no, she hasn't. You haven't seen Not Pulp Fiction? Not yet. I haven't seen it yet. All right, listeners, you can't see, it's but probably, I'm pointing to the like door, to and I'm telling her to leave. I'm sorry. Spoiler alert, there's a guy where a man takes a shotgun blast to the ghoulies. Well, you can't really spoil it. Like, it's a well-known film. Oh, it's really good. Were you aware of the fact that a man gets a shotgun blast to the groin? I know it's Pulp Fiction. It's Quentin Tarantino. I would have expected something else. Tarantino that. is the boss. I can only think of two film things. I, mean, I was like, about to say I'm pretty sure Pulp Fiction is the only Tarantino film where someone gets shot in the balls. No, but that also happens in Inglorious yeah. Bastards and in Django. I was about and to say yeah. 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 Wait, who gets? Oh yeah, Sam Jackson gets yeah. crotch shotted. Sam Jackson. Yeah, they have the slow mo shot of him screaming, "He shot me in the dick." Sam Jackson went through an awful lot in that movie. <laughs> I really like that bit when they when he goes into the gratuitous slow mo scene in the Hateful Eight. There's just this bit where, like, it it goes on for longer than it needs to, and it's not all action shots. Like, there's a really slow motion bit of um, Michael Madsen just standing there with his hands in the air. I don't have a gun. Oh, that's so funny. So I can shoot him. But the entire scene is in ultra slow motion. So like, even the non action shots, even just the weird stuff's in slow motion. It's something oh. that it's something that Snyder, um, Snyder wouldn't do. Oh, okay. Snyder goes slow motion on every action shot, but he would never go slow motion on dialogue. Yeah. Wait, has he? I'm trying to think. Unless it was someone going no. Yeah, when they blow up Rorschach, is that in slow motion? No. Actually, Dan's reaction to that when no, he just falls to his knees and screams. All right, I feel like that would work better in slow motion, but yeah. Actually, I feel like I would have taken away with it. Nah. I, I have to say, I was watching that scene from Watchmen yesterday. Because it's uh, a real good scene. Yes, exactly. I talk about it in my film portfolio. <laughs> where, the bit where Rorschach dies, and it's... I was listening to the music. It's it's really well done. Like, the music builds to a crescendo as he's um, as he's talking. It, it hits the crescendo as he screams, Do it! He explodes, and the moment he explodes, the music cuts out completely. It goes silent, right? It's just the sound of the wind, and then Owl Man falls to his knees and screams, oh. Night Owl, Foster's Reason oh. No! Like, you like, see, we've mentioned about Watchmen before. It's a great film if you view it through scenes on YouTube. It's, it's, it's best watched as a scene anthology. It's yeah. not as good if you watch it as a straight film, because then it just sort of... 
It, it, it drags. Mm. Have you ever seen the thing about how Zack Snyder is willing to ruin a scene just to get a cool moment into it? Yeah. It's a thing where, if you look at Batman vs. Superman as a case study, any time there's a cool moment, it is great, it is visually interesting, but it normally just ruins the scene. It is just interrupting, it's jarring, <laughs> and he hasn't thought it through. So he's like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if Superman's just dragging a boat suddenly? I mean, let's give him no context. Or, <laughs> hey, how about they look at the screen and they look back and Superman's already there? How cool would that be? You see, I love, I both love and hate Snyder films because they're so much fun to just, just hate on. They're just... All DC films are, really. Also, I will warn for future episodes, we get sidetracked a lot. It's not like we have actually any actual focus in the first place. Oh, it's impossible well, to yeah. get sidetracked if we yeah. don't have a track. <laughs> hey, we're supposed to talk about trailers, guys. We've All right, back, some... back to trailers. She's right. Back um, to trailers. Um, 300's really good. 300's <laughs> really good. <laughs> when the elephant's coming along and they just take them out, it's yeah. really good. I, I, I always hate when people would give out to 300 for being a historically inaccurate story. Because, like, when you look at it, it's the entire film is a story being told by a guy who wasn't there. Mm. Like, the guy telling the story is the guy who got stabbed in the eye really early on and had to leave. Yeah. So he's just, like, s- sitting around a campfire in Marathon, and all of the 10,000 Spartans can somehow hear him quietly telling the story. He's, he's like, not talking loud at all. It's like, it's like, yeah, so then he sort of just King Leonidas came along and struck the dice. So, so like, yeah, nobody... when he's describing Xerxes as like a ten foot tall god king, and when there's elephants who are as big as a building, and when there's a giant rhino that gets killed with a spear through the eye, when there's like weird monster people, when there's like a goat demon in Xerxes' <laughs> camp, none of that actually happened. It's just this guy embellishing Wait. to make a good story. Did the Mister Sunday movie thing come from that goat scene, or is that just is that just coincidence? I don't know. All I'm saying is there's a bit in Xerxes' camp where there's a big orgy and in the middle of it there's a black-headed goat demon playing a liar. Yay! He's, n- he's not like... There are other mutants in Xerxes' army. There's the weird guy with the knife hands. There's the weird guy who's really tall and got fangs. There's the one that portrays them and looks like Lemony Snicket. No, he's just physically disabled, Jack. He's not a mutant. <laughs> <laughs> looks like a dirty mutant. Back to mutants. How good does Logan look before I'm in trouble? <laughs> There's you know what? I begin to think, okay, for future, whenever we talk about trailers, we're going to end with, is it going to be a g- great movie, good movie, good yeah. movie? Or we'll give it a rating. We'll yeah. give it... All right, so... Uh, rating movies by their trailers. That's good idea. Power Rangers. Like what we expect. Power Rangers. Why are we going to give that out of 10? Six. I'm giving it a nine out of 10. I'm going to give it a five. <laughs> You're just I really... You're giving it a 9 out of 10 because of that one Megasword shot. It looks so cool! <laughs> Although it was a really good movie. It looks like It looks like Pacific Rim. It's it's real good. It shouldn't look like anything but Power Rangers. Alright, fair enough. Now, I was always a big fan of the aesthetic where the, power, where the Megazords look like guys in really, really blocky outfits that it's hard to move. I honestly hated that like so the much. Shit out of each other, you know? The only time it ever worked was in Dino Thunder. Jeez, we're sidetracked again. Dino Thunder. <laughs> I'm going into this. Because in Dino Thunder, they mix CGI with suit animation, and it looks ten times. They even put stop motion in there, and it blends together so beautifully. You're like, oh, that could be a guy in a suit, or that might actually be a giant robot man. Except the bit where he jumps ten feet in the air and then drops down, like, drill arm first. That, that's definitely... You can't tell me that's not the coolest thing ever. I will admit, Dino Thunder had one of the best theme songs, and without a doubt, the best Megazord transformation yeah. sequence. If... You know in Logan how everybody has, like, a robot hand or whatever, a robot hand? Yeah. One guy has a robot hand, and I can't remember... There's a couple... One has, like, a robot arm, one has a robot eye... I keep saying robot. <laughs> robot. A robot. <laughs> so if I had a robot hand, I'd want it to be a drill. Because yeah, how I could a robot hand? It would be a drill. All right. So um, if Logan. I had a robot hand. It would be a drill. Logan, what are we expecting for that? It's going to be a good film. Good film. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. I'm gonna give that a good nine out of ten. Right next to Power Rangers. Hmm. I was gonna say eight out of eight out of ten because like we've had expectations for X Men films before, and the web- I mean like Deadpool, great. Um, Apart from Deadpool, all the last clips. all the last X Men movies have been like what starts with a good handshake, then goes limp halfway through, then kind of firms off for a second, like maybe and has gone limp again. I think probably the best X Men films are probably X Men First Class, and I really like X Two. You know, I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be the one guy. I don't like X Men One or Two. 
I thought I understand X Men One, but I actually I do like X Men Two. I think the best part of X Two is the opening before they introduce any of the X Men, and it's just Kurt Wagner in the White House. Just, just knife and fools. But, uh, it's far, it's by, by, by far and large, the best scene in the entire film. Which is the best X Men film, excluding Deadpool? Yeah, it's first class. It's first it, class it is. Like, it is yeah. by far first class. Yeah. The yellow jumpsuits is what puts it over the edge for me. I put it on par with uh, Days of Future Past, and then I see the yellow jumpsuit, I'm like, nah, that's cooler. That's way fucking cooler. Mm-hmm. Alright, uh, next up. Not a trailer, but more of a teaser. Infinity War. What oh. do we think? I was very excited to see Chris Pratt and Robert Downey Jr. on the set together, yes. Hey, yes. you forgot about little Tom Holland. Little Tom Holland. <laughs> Tom Holland. Uh, little Tom Holland. Oh, look, it's little Tom Holland dancing around <laughs> with his leprechaun drawl. Oh, he thinks he's a Spider-Man, does he? Why do we go... Tim a thing or two about being a I'll... Spider-Man, I do. I love that Tom Holland is English, but we <laughs> went super Irish instead. <laughs> we didn't go super Irish, we went super leprechaun. There's a difference. <laughs> It's the same. <laughs> uh, Don't promote stereotypes, Jack. Also, the idea of Tom Holland sounding super British when he talks is real funny to me. I feel like he was actually playing up the accent. In that <laughs> I think he felt self-conscious about being near to Americans, so he was playing it up a bit. But he was going like... Plus, it's Chris Pratt and Robert Downey Jr., two of the most charming men alive. Yeah, like th- those would make... Those guys would make anyone feel They could come in the room and just slap, start slapping my mother, and I'd be like, do more. You guys Why are great. Why do you keep using that? Keep using that? That's so I awesome. love my mother an awful lot. I genuinely do. She's the greatest person in my life, apart so, from you guys. So, you, so you're going to be listening to this. And no, no, it's the thing is, I love her that much, your, but that's how I can prove how much I care for these people. Why your main measurement of goodness is, oh man, even if they're beating my <laughs> beloved mother, I'd still, I'd applaud them. That's how good they are. I love her so much. I love her more than life itself. But I'm willing to come in and see Chris Pratt to slap her at the place. <laughs> My gosh! This is a real dark side to you, Jacob. I'm yeah, like, oh, it's... I've known you for a while. Speaking of funny. dark sides, oh. anybody see the Injustice trailer and all the little teasers they've been putting out? Because it looks real good. I think I only saw the first one where they're kind of, look, it's Affleck being funny. <laughs> you oh. wanted humor. No. <laughs> <laughs> I've got also we went right away from Avengers let's go back to Avengers for a sec I thought of Justice League I'm like Justice League yeah, yeah. I'm oh, no. Avengers. <laughs> how good does the, that concept art look I know concept art means jack shit but I still I really like the shot from Thor Ragnarok of Hela uh, from the back just facing off against the Asgardian army oh, like, it's, it's just concept art but it does look very good it looks good. Then, uh, it's, her, it's the exact same outfit she had in Thor vs. Hulk the animated mm-hmm. movie there's no um, actual footage out yet but there is a pre-CGI shot where it's They've just kind of put... They've almost rotoscoped like a version of the Hulk into it. And he's wearing all the gladiator armor and Thor is jumping towards him. And I think I nearly passed out. I was so happy with that. <laughs> Why can't it just be Planet Hulk for the whole movie? It is Planet Hulk. They're just doing Planet Hulk. I think just two... Why, no, one thing that's worrying me is the fact that Mark Ruffalo is being billed like an extra... So I think the Hulk versus Thor scene is going to be short, and there's going to be oh. much interaction between Thor and... Bruce it's going to be a Batman versus Superman, where we build up for two hours for a four-minute fight that is isn't is good, but isn't what we wanted. Yeah. Oh, to be fair, if Ben Affleck walked into my house and started beating my mother, I'd be <laughs> What is wrong with you, you monster? You sick man. No, uh, going back to Marvel, Guardians of the Galaxy 2. It looks um, Guardians of the Galaxy ish. I, I love it. Yeah, I, I love it's, it. It's, it's, it's going to be good. That's it's going to be a Marvel movie. There's, so. I'm not frothing at the mouth. We know it's going to be a solid, entertaining film. Yeah. I see Baby Groot and I see nothing but love in his eyes, so I can't say anything. I can't be objective. I'm looking at Vin Diesel's little jack. I'm like, oh my god. He's still voiced by Vin Diesel, right? I hope so. I, I, because how amazing uh, would it be if, like, okay, for the first film, we're going to take Vin Diesel, this amazing actor, most popularly known for his amazing voice, and we're going to give him a role with one line, and we're going to say it over again. And then in the sequel, he's still doing it, but now we put his voice through a filter, so you can't even tell it's him anymore. I'll see what funny <laughs> he sounds that. like a stupid tree, baby. Picture Vin Diesel trying to do the baby voice. I though. am Groot. You're doing great, Vin. What You're doing great. Put it through a filter. What That's what I'm saying. Vin Diesel standing in a room. That, and he doesn't know the different languages as well. So it's like Groot, it's like the baby Groot. Like now then, it's me, it's me, it's Jamie Groot. Gunn here. I'm gonna need you to sound more babyish. Can you do that, bit? I'm going to be honest with you. This is about as baby as I can go here. Why are you Morgan Freeman? <laughs> I'm going to be honest. My Vin Diesel and my Morgan Freeman sound remarkably similar. Mr. Wayne, I'd rather not know what you're doing. When I'm asked, I don't have to tell anybody lies. 
So for the next 20 minutes of the podcast, you can just skip it. We're just going to do Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman. <laughs> <laughs> <Free. laughs> he crawled through a river of shit that day that ended a frame. Wow, that's not even sort of the quote. Not even close. It's been a very long time since I've watched Shawshank Redemption. I've watched... It's my favorite movie. Really? Yeah. And it's I love how your favorite movie is such like this beautiful and poetic thing. Mine's The Avengers. <laughs> Yours it's is beautiful and poetic, whatever way you look at it. The yeah. problem with the Avengers is the Avengers never gets better. Like you watch the Avengers first time, and it's the best thing you'll ever see. But that's and then afterwards, it's just it's sort of like a comfort food movie. It's solidly good and entertaining, and it's got a load of payoff. It's better than Avengers too. No, my thing is Whereas, it doesn't like, degrade. The Shawshank Redemption yeah. isn't something you can rewatch much, but yeah. every time you do, it's. It's exactly the same as the first time you watched it. My thing with because any of the Marvel, so long, any of the Marvel <laughs> movies, I love them the first time I see them. Doctor Strange, fucking beautiful the first time I saw it. Yep. Second time, it's not as good. Why did you see it twice? Um, once was with you and once was with Dan and Dion. Oh. And because you oh, wanted to go yeah. like two weeks after it came out, I'm like, fuck you guys, I'm going to open a weekend. Look, we were busy, man. I'm sorry, I'm the only one without a social life. No, I just, I knew if I didn't, because I'm so interconnected on social media and I have so many people in my life willing to spoil it on me just to get one up on me. I have plenty of enemies. Just ask my terrible ex-girlfriend. But... Oh, we're not free. No, 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 no names, no names. That stays outside the podcast. That stays outside the podcast. But, no, no. talking people on the stupid podcast, man. Except except Lemony Snicket. That guy can go fuck right off. I didn't mean anything against Mr. Daniel. It's just that Lemony Snicket doesn't look like Patrick Warburton. (laughs) <laughs> or he doesn't I, oh my god I got it I got it so I know in, who you, in the 2005 one with, or whatever year it came out the one with Jim Carrey was was Lindley Snicket played by Neil Gaiman no I, I don't think so google it uh, yeah I will also I just figured out who would have been the perfect Lemony Snicket okay. you remember Fantastic Beasts yes the chubby Howard Stark from that <gasps> that guy would have been perfect he looks just like him you mean oh, Jacob he doesn't, he doesn't look just like him but English that was a good movie Good movie. I'm not a Harry Potter fan, but I enjoyed that film. It was a good movie. It was, it was a good movie. I yes. loved it. I'm not. I'm not all wizards of magic. But that was pretty damn sweet. Sorry, back to my point about how um, I went early just because I know it was going to get spoiled. Otherwise, oh, he was played by Jude Law in the TV Jude Law. Oh yeah, he was. It's going to be the same way with Logan. I'm seeing that opening weekend, so nobody can spoil it for me. I mean, uh, spoiler alert: Professor X dies. Bah. Aww. I hope, it's, I hope it's just a real anticlimactic thing, though. Like, he tries to have a flight of stairs or something like that. Right. Trying to bring it back. <laughs> trying to create some fo- so- sort of focus. Homecoming. Spider-Man Homecoming. It looks like... Also, we've given up on trailers and we're just talking about movies we think are going to be good. I'm just going to say every time I say trailer. Or it looks like it's going to be bad. I think that's... Like, it. oh, let me, let me just spew out some trailers here. Like, Wonder Woman, Justice League, we're going to... We're not going to go trailers. Let's go movies that look exciting this year. <laughs> oh, oh, Spider-Man looks real good. Ho, ho, Homecoming. It looks like oh. it's... It, it's focusing a little The Christmas too much. special version, Ho Ho Homecoming. It, lo- it looks like it's going to be focusing a little bit too much on the high school side of Spider Man because we've had, like, at this point, three films of that. No, we haven't. We've had the first act of Amazing Spider Man, which we see maybe ten minutes in the school. The he goes back to the school over the course of the film. Once, and that's to fight the lizard. True. The second, the first Spider-Man movie, uh, what, what's the name? First and second. Both, yeah. uh, both no. the first two Sam Raimi's were, weren't they? Second one, he's in college, because you see Dr. Kirk Connors. Fuck, we're nerds. We see Dr. <laughs> Kirk <laughs> All I know is that. Wow, we only realized that now. No, he's in college, and he meets Dr. Kirk Connors. He's like, why are you late? He's like, uh, um, I was off doing stuff. Uh, yeah, I was yeah, off yeah. spider man And Kirk, wait. I will say the first movie, did Kirk Connors again? Yeah, I don't know. He was played by, like, someone you wouldn't expect or something. Anyway. It was somebody I'm like, yeah, that guy looks good. He'd be a great lizard man. <laughs> He'd be a great lizard, lizard man. man. Yeah, Imagine like, if they did the lizard in the Sam Raimi film. That would have been spectacular. He would have, he would have made him full on crocodile. Yeah, he does. Oh, yeah. With the lab coat. He does yeah. body horror so damn well. It would have mm-hmm. been beautiful. I, want, I wanted Sam Raimi to do Spider-Man 4. I know Spider-Man 3 isn't loved by everyone. I liked it, but... No, you didn't. I fucking love that movie. Mm-hmm. Are you kidding me? That fight with the Sandman at the end is on point. And he blows up Venom and Sandman just kind of disappears. There's a lot of good parts in that movie. But they're so overshadowed by all the terrible parts. Well, they'll agree to disagree. To be honest... Well, how great is that strip down the, down the, uh, down the street? Sorry, I can't even talk about it. <laughs> it's so yeah. beautiful. Yeah, it is. Right. 
<laughs> to be honest, I never massively enjoyed any of the Sam Raimi Spider-Man films. The second one is beautiful. It's the second one is the perfect version <laughs> okay, of Spider-Man. I'd say, yeah, the second one's probably my favorite out of those films, but... Yeah, so I think I like the second one mostly because of the guy who played Doc Ock. Yeah. I only really like the first one because Willem Dafoe being himself. <laughs> and that's, well, that's where the third one falls Dafoe. apart. It doesn't have neither of the villains work. Well, like I don't have anything against anything. And it's just that one never existed. Who's the guy from? Who's the guy who plays Ash from Ash vs Evil Dead? Oh, um, f- oh. No, I Come can't. on, this is gonna. Uh, oh no! Oh, no. We've got off. We've got off homecoming, but I'm gonna pitch something here. It's even. It's probably oh, been said before. Well, but you want to pitch it quick? We only got like ten minutes of this. Thing. We've got plenty of time. <laughs> Kill where we're going. We don't need time. <laughs> All right, so um, you got you got him. Just keep you start. All right. Anyway, um, Bruce Campbell. Bruce, Bruce Campbell. Campbell. There we go. How did I forget Bruce Campbell? Anyway, I'm in all of the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies, Bruce Campbell makes an appearance in a cameo, and in the fourth one. The idea was he was going to appear as uh, Old Fishbowl had himself Mysterio. Oh. And then it would be like, oh yeah, he's interwoven into Spider-Man. Bruce like, Campbell oh. is Mysterio. Washed up actor from an old horror film. Yeah. How great would that have been for Spider-Man 4? It would have made... Oh my, oh my god, it's like how Birdman is playing Vulture. Exactly. It would have been the perfect... perfect. It would have been such a brilliant like actor cameo. Thank you for reminding or, me that, actually. Illusion. It would have been such a fantastic actor illusion. How I mean, great is it to have Michael Keaton as... Uh, I mean, it, not Falcon. Um, Vulture. Vulture. It has layered so much because in Birdman it was a parody of Keaton playing Batman, and now him playing Vulture is like a parody of Keaton playing Birdman. It's like three layers of Inception at this stage. It's, it's never going to stop. Next, he's going to be playing. Here, Inception. Th- soon, there's going to be an animated film where Michael Keaton is vo- voicing a Vulture. Oh <laughs> yes. And then there's going to be a movie that Vulture about, fights a bat. And Jungle then, Book Two. Let's do it, people. And then there's going to be a movie about Michael Keaton playing a voice actor. It's just going to keep. Going. It's, yeah, it's gonna keep going till we kill Michael Keaton. Spirals Kilkeen. down. Just this <laughs> every world single, insanity. every single role he has is a reference to the previous one. Until Michael Keaton started. just goes insane in the end, which is just Birdman again. <laughs> he just goes it back to Birdman. The process. Again. I mean, if you see Michael Keaton Batman films, then he's basically just going back to Bruce Wayne again. Yeah, because like Keaton's Bruce Wayne was crazy. Ke- yeah, did you see? Uh, somebody broke it down the other day. But the idea is, there's that one scene where the Joker is dropped into the vat of chemical. The chemical He's like Jack Nathan. The, the Vat of Campbell. Yeah. <laughs> just a, just a giant, Bruce Campbell everywhere. <laughs> just a giant vat full of Bruce Campbell's chin just floating. <laughs> oh my god. I, you know what Suicide Squad where he jumps into the vat? If I saw Bruce Campbell's chin, I'm diving right it's in just, there. It's just nothing but a giant pot of Bruce Campbell's chins just all bumping into each other. <laughs> okay, no, um, it's like jumping into a ball pit except they growl at you. Somebody pointed this out to me the other day. There's a scene in that where he's holding up, I think it was a cracked video or some shit like that. But Are he's you holding about up. to say he's holding up Bruce Campbell's chin? <laughs> <laughs> he's holding up Bruce Campbell's chin right over the bat. No, he's holding up um, the Joker until he brings the Joker up into the light, and it cuts to Batman's face, and he changes reaction from just staring at him to anger. Yeah. And then the Joker drops. Somebody pointed out the other day. He dropped him. It looks like he dropped him. He pulls him up. World's greatest detective realizes that's the man who kills his that's parents, Joe and he Joe. just lets go. It's yeah, it's Joe Chill, it's Jack Napier. It's, it's, he lets him go and drops him. What's What's kind of great is that like. Michael Keaton's Bruce Wayne never actually says it. Like, we're d- it's sort of subtly just shown through, like, the story that he's figured out that this is the man who killed it. Like, they have the right. flashback sequences, but he, there isn't a bit where he goes, you killed my father. You know, I, I was... No you killed my you father. See, uh, Be back to die. I didn't think he knew it till the very end, when he's like, hey, did you ever... Ever dance with the devil in the pale moons? Like, and then he's like, it, it's like the old snap moment, you're a big lizard man, amazing Spider-Man reference. <laughs> Oh, snap, you're a giant lizard man. <laughs> <laughs> See, that was in the original version of The Amazing Spider-Man. For some reason, they cut it out. Oh, oh gee whiz, you're, an, you're a lizard man, aren't no. you? But yeah, back so, to Homecoming, because we're a mile away. Yeah. A lizard man. God, there was so much yeah, I'm stuff board. here. Can we squeeze in five minutes? I'm, oh. oh, we got plenty of time. We've got this. Five minutes? I'm on board with Hillary Clinton being a lizard. You, Jack. No, you don't. Stop lying to the audience. No, I'm sorry. I'm being brutal today. First, my <laughs> hatred... So mean today. First, my <laughs> hatred of Lemony Snicket. I think the only reason I agree with Lemony Snicket because I feel like I've wasted my time watching the Netflix series, even though that's not his I fault. I haven't seen it. But the books are good. Books He's are good. Dead. I don't know. I don't know if I want to watch the Netflix series. Don't. It's not worth like, it. It's a waste of your time. And I adore I, that. You know when Lemony Snicket comes on in the books and he's like, hey, maybe you should stop reading and start watching because yeah. it's a waste of your time. It's too gross. Yeah. Take his advice. 
just stop watching there and then when he goes on the screen, he's just like, listen to the man whose voice <laughs> crunk. Um, <laughs> the bit where Patrick Warburton. Elysium isn't it? Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> you know the problem? I don't. I don't like Patrick Warburton as a choice for Lemony Snicket. Jude Law was brilliant because Jude, yeah. Jude Law is first of all English and second of all is able to do that sort of. He sounded sincere when he's yeah. when he's saying it means Jude Law. this isn't a <laughs> no said. When he's doing when he does the in series of unfortunate events is intro that's in all of the books, when he starts saying, This isn't a nice story, it might be better if you just stop here. When Jude Law said it, you know, it's almost like this is it's how I imagined it when I was reading the book. It's yeah. sort of it's sincerity. It sounds yeah. like he, he genuinely doesn't want to tell the story. Yeah, Patrick, when Patrick Warburton, Warburton sound, says anything, it just sounds like he's joking. <laughs> anything. Patrick Warburton could come into my house and say, Hello, I'm going to beat your mother up. <laughs> I laugh. Because I'm like, oh, Patrick Warburton, you're never serious. <laughs> you're using this analogy. It's a new rolling joke. I've started a thing, it's a catchphrase. Oh, Daniel Day- if Daniel Day-Lewis walked into my house and started beating my mother up, I'd stop him, but I'd take a moment to appreciate him as a character actor. <laughs> if but- Jared Leto walked into my house and started beating my mother, I'd kill the man. If Jared Leto Stab walked- me in the throat. If Jared Leto walked into my house, I'd punch him in the face. And then I'd beat up his mother. <laughs> No, Not I, because I actually <laughs> liked his Joker performance. I, just I fucking hate Jared. his Joker. Actually, let's uh, speaking of um, actually, Joker. I, Jared Leto. I hate. Uh, doesn't matter. I'll get into my Jared Leto. We'll have a whole episode of why I hate Jared Leto. But let's talk about We're the not D. Having that We're having that episode next week's episode. Write that We're down. I'm not going to give you a vehicle to bully people. <laughs> I'm not bullying people. I'm just going to talk about why Jared Leto was stupid being the Joker, sending the full condoms to people, dead animals. For a role, he got five to ten minutes of that movie. He was pretty pissed at that. He was pissed at that, but when you see all he the scenes so there are, it still adds up to ten minutes. He was so desperate to live up to Heath Ledger. Yeah, no worries. Heath Ledger locked himself in a room and did painkillers. You know what Mark Hamill does beforehand? You know what Mark Hamill does? He drinks a warm glass of water. Doesn't send condoms to anyone. Doesn't send bullets yeah, but to anyone. But keep in mind, we don't know what kind of shit Mark Hamill did when he was first getting into the role. I mean... <laughs> Well, I know that he drove down the highway practicing laughs for like an hour. Is that a car crash joke? No, no. No, he actually did that. He had, uh, no, I, heard I thought you were building up to it and no, then he crashed no, no, in the car. No, 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 no. I would never make that kind of joke. Oh, Mark, Hamill is, Mark Hamill is a national treasure. I fucking love Mark Hamill. A different nation. But yeah. Yeah. Mark Hamill came into my house and started... No, no, but like, no to be fair, please. If oh, Mark Hamill came up and started laughing at my mother, I'd... Um, <laughs> I'd start laughing with him. Yeah, hang on. It's infectious. I think we've kind of lost it. But anyway... <laughs> Speaking of losing it, if we have DC a- going downhill. How are we feeling about Wonder Woman? Uh, it looks uh, I kind of just looks like Captain it's America. It's like you watch it; it could be good, but considering all their previous films, you know that little spark of hope just won't ignite. You know, how DC I mean, are great at making trailers. Yes. They're real good at making trailers. They're real good at making trailers. Not even the Wonder Woman trailer feels that great. Mm. Maybe it's because I'm like, oh, I know where this goes. I've been down this road uh, three times already. The problem yeah. is, the problem is, it's just. The Captain America movie again, except Thor is Captain America and Peggy Carter is a man now. Mm. Plus, the one who, Chris Pine's character is going to be Peggy Carter. Speaking of which, Agent Carter, can we bring that back, please? It, do we need it? It, it, it did all no. it needed to do. No, yeah. we need a third season. I think, I'm sorry. Well, what, when is that set? The 40s? I think you do a Post seven. World War II. I think you do. I My think 40s. you wait. Uh, you give it 20 years later. For your Peggy Carter, and she's in the seventies now. Ah, give her the old grey highlights, like they, like, like they did in Ant Man. Give her the grey highlights. The same, the grey highlights. And she's working with a young Hank Pym. And it's just and an Ant Man and the Wasp series. We are once again gonna have the guy who played Hank Pym in Ant Man. His name I can't remember. Michael, Michael Douglas. Douglas. Michael Douglas. We're gonna have Michael Douglas again, and we're still gonna give him that CGI that makes him look like ten years old, younger at the least. At the most, rather. I just pictured Michael Douglas, but we gave him shaggy hair and a mustache because he's the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like it's hippie Ant Man. Who, who could Peace play? Peace and love. Who, Peace and love. Who could play Young Hank Pym? Um, oh, that's a hard one. Young Tom Holland. <laughs> It's oh. him and everything. Uh, he plays every character now. I was trying to do the voice I and interact. I could. Tom if, Holland. <laughs> if we're having Hank Pym and Janet Van Dyne in uh, Peggy Carter season four, three, three, three. season three, are we going to have the uh, domestic abuse subplot? Yes. Where so Hank Pym came into the room and started hitting my mother. <laughs> That actually worked. Okay. Hank Pym, if Hank Pym came into my house and started beating my mother, I would write a very stern letter of complaint to Marvel Studios. Oh my god. No, I wouldn't. I fucking love Marvel. No, I know. Uh, 
So, but, guys, I think we've reached the end of this part. Yeah, not yet, so. not yet. We still forgot one movie that we have not talked about, oh. and I will be angry if we don't talk about it. I realize I'm keeping us all here. I've locked the doors. People haven't seen me, but I'm, I'm standing oh in front of the Oh, my God, the room is filling up with neurotoxin. Ah, you're going to have to cut the key out of your eye socket. No, all right. Oh, I was going portal. You yeah, oh, that's the same. Oh, I was doing Saul. Yeah, I was going went like... Saul, you went Saul. <laughs> I'm gonna prove the fact that you deserve to live. This is a perfect description of the differences between you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Portal, you go solo. (laughs) Anyway, speaking of going too dark and too gritty and overreacting, Justice League. It's not gonna be great, but I'm probably. We know it's not gonna be great. It's gonna be. It's gonna be fine. I'm betting now, like it'll be great, and two of us will have the airworks. Like I'm calling it that. Justice League's the greatest movie of this year. I'd be happy to eat my words if it was good. I I know Jason Momoa is gonna be good. I know Ezra Miller is gonna be a fine Flash. You don't agree with me, but that's just because you're a Flash TV show fanboy. Because it's a real good show. It's fine. It's a. It's the perfect comic book show. It's a. It feels like an issue of the Flash every time you're watching an, yeah. a, an episode. Yeah, yeah. They, I, I do see. admire them for the fact that I had a CGI Gorilla Grodd. I admire them all. Twice. And a big shark man. And a big shark man. I admire them for that. And he fought Supergirl. I know. I just didn't think it was, it was that good. Also, fun. there's a great line at the end of that where he's like, well, this was a great crossover. And Supergirl turns to him and he's like, you know, had you given me five minutes to go get my cousin Superman... The two of us could have sorted of this. You really didn't need anybody else here. Oh, so I, they, I they hate under- that version of Superman. Oh. Stup- he's so good. Stupid. He's better Henry. than he's better than Henry Cavill. I disagree. Henry Cavill okay. looks the part, but this guy acts like Superman. I thought we were talking about Justice League, man. Yeah, we are. Back oh, to Justice anyway, League. The death of Superman in Batman v Superman is so worthless that I don't even feel bad about spoiling it because we already have seen like press photos of Henry Cavill in his new black Superman costume. How great would it be if they just killed him again? <laughs> if they brought him back <laughs> act movie, two. They just continuously kill him. His first scene is Steppenwolf comes out of nowhere and just stabs him in the gut with the kryptonite spear. That's how you introduce Darkseid. So way. act two Superman comes back, kills a load of parademons. Like, yes, the oh, Justice League are together. Omega beams out of nowhere. Boom. It's just heat fish. He's gone. Everybody's like, oh shit. I have been like, like five minutes. Don't worry. He's going to come back and just like, He's dust on the floor. He's like, it was a teleportation f- beam. I've watched the Justice League cartoon. Nah, I'm the world's greatest detective. He'll be fine. I just found his eyeball in the, pile, in the pile of dust. <laughs> I have his hair right here. He's holding up like the quiffs, the Superman quiff. Like he's, he's straight up dead, man. No, he's the worst kryptonite. His head's he's over there. Kryptonite. Excuse me, guys. Also, <laughs> yeah, it turns Superman just really gay, doesn't it? I mean, there's something wrong with that, but it's real funny to imagine. Oh, that's like just shows you age, like, the age back then. Like, of, of all the apocalypse themes they could have had as the villain, they could have had Granny Goodness, they could have had Desad, but they went with Steppenwolf. <laughs> the idea of the Justice League fighting an old woman is really Granny amazing. Granny Goodness is a terrifying character. If it, if it had been Granny Goodness and Desad and like... She's also real disgusting, because she's an old woman in like a bikini. Yeah, I know. That's the most terrifying villain design I've seen. Forget yeah. Venom or Darkseid. Why does Granny Goodness wear a bikini? She wears like like a V thing, like Wonder Woman, and like knee high boots. So her like wrinkly thighs like flap towards you. I do not need that visual image yet. Please. I'm thinking of Catwoman in The Dark Knight Returns. I'm not thinking of Cat. Oh wait, no. In the old. No, no, no. You know what I'm thinking of? This is gonna. No, no, no. I'm combining Big Barta with who's Darkseid's son again? Not Darkseid's son. Yeah, Darkseid's son, Calabac. I'm picturing what? Calabac. You know how Calabac has like kind of Calaban is an old woman. No, could you imagine a, an old woman dressed as Calaban? That's what I was picturing for oh Granny Goodness. Okay, guys. Oh my God, he's right. Granny Goodness wears a bra and fishnet stockings. <laughs> Fucking nailed it. And on that note, <laughs> on that we're going to wrap up this podcast. Oh, no, Thank you for listening. Thank you. Sorry, sorry, I, uh, that's not fishnet stocking. God damn it, John. It's, it's plate mail, don't worry. Oh, but oh. she wears plate mail stockings. John, do you want to pick up the phone? Because I called it. Good night, everyone. Good night. Have a nice night. She does have exposed cleavage, though, and it is wrinkly. It's really <laughs> good. Oh, my God. Yeah, it is. Don't look... It looks like she has a chest scrotum. Don't right? look up pictures of Granny Goodness. <laughs> or Lemony Snicket. It will make you guys, sick. This you has been... Okay, that is too mean on Lemony Snicket. Come on. <laughs> Let me think it. If you listen to this, I am sorry. You're a lovely man, and you're probably more attractive than I am. Goodbye, everyone. Okay, oh, guys. Goodbye. Thanks. This has been Ryan and Jack and John. Seriously, and... don't look at pictures of Granny. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll we'll put up another episode next week. So there's thanks for listening. Thing. There's a pretty welcome back. Come back next week where I talk about why Jared Leto is the worst. While well, Jared Leto beats our mothers up. <laughs> 
Oh god, why don't we come in here to do the episode Jared Leto sneaks into our house and beat our, meets our mother's god, god, let's everyone. not doing it right now. Oh god, we gotta go. We need to go home and stop Jared Leto. <laughs>